Good evening and welcome to our Epiphany service. For those with the red communion book, our service will begin on page one. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the Holy Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Savior Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us therefore confess our sins. And we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen all goodness, and keep in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray the collect for Epiphany. O God, who by the leading of Esther manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, may at last behold your glory face to face, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Please be seated for our first reading. Our readings for tonight are taken from Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 6, 
and Ephesians 3, 1 to 12, and Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. And now for the Old Testament reading from Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes round about and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried in their arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian ever, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 to 12. For this reason, I, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly. When you read this, you shall perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is how the Gentiles, our fellow heirs, members of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the plan of the mystery Eden for ages in God, who created all things, that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose which he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord and in whom we have boldness and confidence of access through the faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, 
Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written, by you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I, too, may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Father, on this day when your son was revealed to the nations, we pray that Christ, the true light, will shine through the darkness of this passing age, will shine into our hearts and reveal your words of life and truth to us. O God, our Savior, strength, and Redeemer. Amen. Our text is a bit long. It's taken from our Gospel reading from St. Matthew, chapter 2, verse 10 to 11. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary's mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Once more, good evening and um, a very warm welcome to you all as we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. I pray that all has been with you and that. God will continue to bless each and every one of you and protect you as we journey into this year, 2021. The Feast of the Epiphany is a very important day in the life of the church and in our church calendar. It is also known as the revelation of Christ to the Gentiles or to the world or the revelation of Christ to those who do not believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. And it occurs 12 days after Christmas ends today, where the feast falls midweek. Christmas was a very private affair. It is as when, when one, a woman gives birth to a child, it's very private. 
And um, when mother and baby are back home or whatever it might be, and they are doing well, the baby rests, and then family and friends come and visit the child. And so it is with the Feast of the Epiphany. Christmas was very private. Their first guest, as we've heard over the last few weeks, were the shepherds who were told by the angels to go and visit. And Christ was born in a stable in the lowliest of places. The angelic host were there. And now, as a very public event, this wise men are sinister pointing them these are people who don't believe in our lord jesus christ or in god in the way that we know it but who saw a star and so they followed it and then followed it to bethlehem to pay homage to a king who will rule the world not even knowing but being told and these are important people being told that unto us or unto you is born a king in Bethlehem. And the gifts that they brought with them were very telling. Very important and expensive gifts. It isn't a gift you give to a poor person. Gold, very valuable. Even till today, it speaks of our Lord's kinship over his creation and the world around us. A crown is made of gold. It must have cost the major, the wise men, a lot of money to give gold to our savior, the baby Jesus. If those who do not know Christ's true worth could give their best to the Lord Jesus, the baby Jesus. What are we offering to God, those of us who believe for his love and devotion to us and for the great sacrifice that he has made? What Christ wants, first and foremost, is our heart, and then all will follow. As Revelation says, he stands at the door of our hearts and is knocking. So for those who have not made that decision to follow Christ, now is the time. Because now the Lord has been revealed to the world as the world's only savior. The next gift given is frankincense, which speaks of holiness. And when you see incense being used in a church. In a cherubal, we, haven't, we are not using one tonight, you will see the incense, you know, being used to purify. And it speaks of the life that God wants us to live. It speaks of all who we are. We are called to live a life of holiness every day and not just on Sundays. And my challenge and my question to each and every one of you is, are you devout in your daily prayers? Are you devout in your study of scripture? Are you living the life of holiness that Christ has called you to live? It's a path that leads to God. Holiness is not the same as pity. We strive to achieve pity, but holiness is a gift of God. We become more holy as we allow God to enter our lives and to dwell in it day by day by the grace of his most excellent Holy Spirit. Pretending is not holiness. It is lived, it seeps through our whole being. If you're a holy person, others will see it by the grace and gift of the most excellent Holy Spirit. 
and myrrh is an anointing oil. It speaks of our Lord Jesus Christ being set apart for a very important task. It speaks of his passion, of his death, of his resurrection. When he went onto the cross to die for you and for me and the rest of the world. As St. Paul puts it, we must first die to sin by confessing all that we have done wrong and call upon God's forgiveness through the passion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is only after this that we can offer our whole life to God to direct and to use as he sees fit. This is the first step towards a life of holiness. One John three nine talks about no one born of God cannot sin, and Psalm twenty five seven talks about God's forgiveness. Remember not the sin of my youth, and Christ. Saint Peter reminds us in one Peter two twenty four, he bore our sins in his body on the cross. Without forgiveness, without restoration. We cannot begin that life of holiness. On this Feast of the Epiphany, where Christ is revealed and given to the world as a gift, let us pray that as the wise men brought gifts to God, we also will bring before God ourselves in humility, in obedience, for God to take us, to use us, to remold us, to break us and to make us new in his image. Holiness is a gift. Let us pray. And um, in your hymn book, number 457, Oh, Worship the King in the Beauty of Holiness. It's a song that we sing a lot. Perhaps if I read the words of the first stanza to you, you might remember that and perhaps use it in your day-to-day -day prayer. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Bow down before him, his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of lowliness, kneel and adore him, the Lord is his name. Let us bow before God let us proclaim his glory with gold of obedience and incense of lowliness. Let us banish away pride from our lives because the Lord abhors proud people. Let us learn to live the good news. The Feast of the Epiphany for us who are believers also calls us to a life of mission to share the good news. Ephesians 3, verse 6, in our reading today, it's, it, it says, that is how the Gentiles, our fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. We are called, like St. Paul, who is a prisoner for our Lord Jesus Christ, to share the good news. Let us, with the apostles, evangelists, and all God's people, who are fellow heirs and members of the same body and partakers of the promise that is in Christ Jesus through the gospel, let us go out and share the good news that we have in us, the good news that can only be shared through a life of holiness, a life of obedience, a life of contrition, and a life full of passion for the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us, who carry within us, by virtue of our baptism, of our confirmation, the mark of the cross that was sealed and seared into us at our baptism, 
May God on this feast of the Epiphany, as he has revealed his Son to the nations, reveal himself to you in your day-to-day -day journey as you strive for a life of holiness and purity, so that you might be found not one thing but acceptable before Christ our Savior. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us pray. The response, Lord, in your mercy, is hear our prayer. Almighty God, gracious Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. The gift of life in his fullness, life eternal. We thank you for your word made flesh, who has come to dwell among us, to redeem us from all that has separated us from you. Lord, in your mercy. On this Feast of the Epiphany, as our Savior Jesus Christ was revealed to the world, we pray that him, Christ, the true light that shines in the darkness of our passing age, will bring light and comfort and convict the hearts and minds of your children to learn to know you and to follow you, to renounce their old life and take on the mantle of our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. May Christ, your word, who has come to bring healing, mercy, grace, salvation, and life to us. May he grant us a safe passage in this year. May he bring light into, the, into darkened hearts and minds, into those who are feeling the effect of the pandemic ravaging the world. May the healing of Christ, may his grace and mercy abound in our world and grant us the courage to face each day anew. Lord, in your mercy, we pray before you and bring before you, Father, the Queen, our Governor, pray for our Prime Minister, Mr. Boris Johnson, for members of the Houses of Parliament and the House of Lords, for our local councillor, and for all those who are leaders in the world. We pray for those who will lead with mercy and compassion, with a heart of humility and obedience to your will. We pray, Father, for grace to abound in the world. We pray for wisdom to abound in the world around us. Lord Jesus Christ, 
We pray, Lord, that all leaders and those with power will use it for the good of your children, not for themselves, not with pride and arrogance, not for party political needs, but for the good of the nations. We pray for peace in our time. We pray for wisdom in our time. We pray for an end to evil, an end to wars, an end to poverty, spiritual poverty, physical poverty, mental poverty, financial poverty, housing poverty. We pray, Father, for an end to poverty in all ways and means that afflicts the world around us. Let your mercy and compassion dwell in our midst. Let healing reign and dwell among nations and peoples. We pray for the peacemakers. We pray for those who are striving for peace, who are striving for an end to injustice, who are striving and, and rooting and finding ways to alleviate the poverty that surrounds us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for ourselves here at Emmanuel Leighton. We pray for all members of this church, this congregation, wherever they might be. For those at home, for those who are shielding, for those at work, for all the essential workers that are numerous in our congregation. We pray for their protection when they go out and when they come back in, and for the family that they leave when they go out to work. We pray, Father, for all those who are going to work, for protection for them. We pray for healing for those who are sick. We pray for grace and mercy for all members of our church. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, for compassion, for healing. Remember all those that we have forgotten but are known to you. We pray for those who are supporting us and for all those who will be watching this service. Let grace, mercy, healing, joy, and happiness enter their lives and their homes. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our nation. We pray for scientists, doctors, nurses, essential workers, street sweepers, drivers, truckers, shop workers, postmen and women, all those who are making our nation tick and run, and for all those who are making so much sacrifice. We pray for all those who are doing exactly the same in different countries around the world. Bless them, Father. Look after them and be with them. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you once more for our lives and the life of our parish here. We thank you for our own diocese of Chemshood. We pray for all our brethren, Christian brethren around the world, for those who have been persecuted for sharing the good news, for those who have been punished, those who have been abused, and those who have been killed. May their soul rest in peace and rise in glory. And we pray for their abusers and persecutors, that in the fullness of time, they will come to know you, our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, Remembering all those who have passed away in faith. Those known to you and those known to us. Remember, remembering those from this parish who had passed away. May their soul rest in peace and rise in glory. In a moment of silence, can you bring your own thoughts and petitions before God? Remembering to pray for a life of holiness, humility, grace, and mercy, and for God to equip you 
with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places to do his will and carry out his will in this new year and beyond. May Christ our Redeemer hear your petitions and grant you according to the bountiful mercies of his grace. Merciful Father, for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand for the peace. The Lord be with you. Our Savior Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. Let us offer those around us in a COVID-free sign of peace.
us give thanks to the Lord our God. All honor and praise be yours always and ever, mighty creator, ever living God. Through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, for at this time we celebrate your glory, made present in our midst. In the coming of the Mega, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as Christ, the Savior sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing a joyful hymn of praise. Yeah. 
you've been blessed by this service of the epiphany. And that as you go about your day-to-day -day lives, our Lord Jesus Christ will reveal himself to you in your prayer, in your reading of Holy Scripture, in all that you do. And may you go with the love of Christ to share the good news of his name and the gospel of mercy, grace, and life to God. May God bless you wherever you might be and we look after you. And if we please stand, Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.